Hey, what's up, folks, and welcome back to the channel today for another special interview. Today, I am joined alongside of a star, producer, even a host, and amongst other talent. Today, we were talking to Muhammad Kareem. Muhammad, how's you going today? How's it doing? I'm pretty good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm I'm really excited uh, having uh, so much uh, uh, good time. You know, I'm I'm in LA right now. I don't know where yeah. you're calling me from. DC, DC. So oh, nice. I mean, finally, nice. I can say we got a little bit of good weather here. But coast to coast action going on today, folks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, all right. But the star of the new film, A Day to Die, which is available uh, now digitally, and it may be in some select theaters, uh, it was released March 4th. Now, uh, folks, if you did look it up or if you are looking it up, you may see a release date of March 22nd, uh, but it is available now, so you can check it out. Um, and he is alongside of Bruce Willis, Frank Grillo, and Leon Robinson. So it's a star-studded cast. It's a film with a lot of action, non-stop action. So you're going to be at the edge of your seat. And if you do have an opportunity to check it out in the theaters, I already highly suggest that you do so. It is it is appropriate. That is the appropriate setting for it. Uh, but before we talk about that, I want to do what I usually don't do. And let's go to the end here. I am interested about these upcoming projects that you have coming on. Now, the first one I want to talk about uh, is because I'm a big horror enthusiast here, big horror buff, and I hear you may be cooking something up, and not only are you going to be in it, but you're going to be uh, helping uh, in terms of producing it as well, too. So that means you have a lot of control over this, which means that this is your idea organically being brought to life, which makes this a passion project, which I love. I'm already committed to anybody who goes out and chases their dreams or want to bring something to life. So as 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 of right now what possibly could you say about that what can we expect and 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 the biggest question is what is the motivation behind it so basically you know in life you do what you do and you you just you know work it and stuff and and you trying to pick like the right project that you can be right for but it, you know also in, in on the same time you always have uh sort of like a project that like a dream that you always have so much passion for you really uh, believe in, you're always thinking about it, but you're just waiting for the right time and with the right partners to be more right? Yeah. So I had always had uh, that project in mind that almost like, well, like 15 years now that yeah. I always had this film in my mind. Like every time I have time, I, I just start writing a little bit of uh, notes and synopsis here and there. Until, you know, uh, I think it was the right time and it's uh, uh, the right time, the right people. And I'm just glad that I, um, you know, my idea and my, my story can come out there and just share it with the whole world. Um, you know, it's basically about an Egyptologist and, um, you know, it, it takes place uh, in here and in Egypt as well. So for so many years, we've been watching a lot of, you know, movies here in Hollywood talking about maybe ancient Egyptians or uh, civilization or talking about like, you know, you see a lot of scenes for the pyramids and all that, but we, people don't know that this is not real. And um, unfortunately they, they shoot it somewhere else. So the fact that I'm originally from Egypt um, and I, I really would love to share like the, the real deal with everyone. I want to show them, you know, the, the, the right locations uh, the, the, the I want to bring the culture into it. I want to bring the, the history into it. Because uh, so far in Hollywood, all these feature films have really done well here in Hollywood, and they're like only handful of, of films. So um, m my idea is way different, and I think it's uh, hopefully it uh, uh, people will love it. Um, uh, you know, I, I got the privilege of uh, the past few years get to uh, organize and invite some filmmakers to fly from Hollywood to go to Egypt to see. Uh, the locations, the different uh, uh, places that we have there, you know, in terms of like the, you know, Ritzy and also Mediterranean, you got like the uh, history when it comes to Luxor and Aswan, the Nile River, all that. And people really don't realize until they have to go there and, and see it. So I had to do this in order to show, uh, you know, the, the filmmakers that it's, you know, it's doable. I can, we can do this. We can show a lot of feature films over there. So this project is, is, is kind of like my baby that I always wanted to uh, get a dot there. And I think right after my two feature films, you know, uh, Score to Settle and now uh, the uh, Day to Die, I think it's the right time 
um, developing this type of uh, project. And I'm, I'm really glad that, uh, you know, I get to uh, partner up with uh, prestigious and really cool uh, uh, producers uh, in Dark Castle. Yeah, yeah. Now, let, let's let's keep it 100 right right quick. 15 years ago, did you did you ever think in terms of your project and this and this and this dream of yours, did you ever think that you have to bear the responsibility of proper representation? You know, I love your question, man. So, this is the the let's keep it 100 as you said. So, I'm not going to say 15 years. I'm going to say five years, the past five years. <laughs> I think a lot of things has been changed. There is a little bit of more diversity happening. There's Hollywood is more open to things to, for a change. And I think should have been a while ago, but you know, it's never too late. And I think the sooner the better. So I think, you know, 15 years ago when I was trying really hard to break through and, you know, you know, try to do something different, staying away from all the stereotype roles, staying away from all this bad representation and all that. Did that cost me? Yes, because I, I could have been in the market, you know, doing my thing and being in the market as an actor a while ago. But I just felt like I, I cannot do this and I don't want to be yeah. part of that because simply it's not it's not right. First of all, it, it, it doesn't represent us right. Um, I think in Hollywood, there was, it's been so much stereotype happening. Um, and the fact that somebody like from Europe, he has to be like the, the, the mafia guy or like you're, you're Hispanic or from Mexico, you have to be the drug dealer yeah. or, you know, like, you know, like, uh, you know, from here, they are Middle Eastern, you're tourists, like all that. I think people started like the audience started like to get fed up with that and see yeah. this is not like, uh, the way it should be. And it kind of creates more and more hatred on stuff that, that we, we don't want to do this. Like right now we're trying to make peace, man. We want to do uh, a lovely sort of environment for everyone. I think it's the whole world is just one, you know, we should be united more than just like, you know, do help to do this sort of like, yeah. you know, uh, separation. So I think um, I had not mentioning that, you know, having uh, a big fan base in the Middle East, and you're a really established actor doing movies and series and hosting uh, shows like The Voice and doing successful films that toured like Camping Festival and winning awards. That kind of became more even pressure on me when I started doing my transition in Hollywood that uh, I think it would have been easier for someone that he he, he didn't do much acting in, 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 in some sort of like, you know, where he originally came from and just come here he doesn't care. He, he, you know, he doesn't have any people to sort of like judge him or anything like that. But I feel like there are so much responsibility that I have to take. And it costed me a lot, to be honest. Like I, I, I felt like I, you know, I, I could have been doing, as I said, a lot of work, but I said, you know what, I, I, sh I should stick to my beliefs and it took longer time, but finally, you know, I, I, I did what I wanted and which, um, you know, 2019, was my first feature film, uh, which was, you know, straight up action, Benjamin Pratt, Nicolas Cage, I, you know, and I didn't play a Middle Eastern Arab role. I played, you know, yeah. just, just, you know, American role, you know, like normal, you know, if you're a good yeah. actor, you're a good actor. I just yeah. had a point I wanted to prove if you can, if you're good for the role, you go for the role. It doesn't matter where, where you come from or your culture or your look, your skin and all that. Yeah. And then I think uh, with a day to die, that's total different level. Like that kind of like proved the concept and prove, you know, that, you know, playing Reynolds in a day to die, a detective reports to his uh, chief of police was Alston Bruce Willis uh, having all my scenes with Bruce and, um, you know, um, playing a good guy. This all like check all these, you know, boxes that I couldn't even think about before. You know, yeah. as you said, 15 years and even less than that, as I said. So I think um, I'm, I'm really happy to do that. I think that's my big win in doing these movies is beside, thank God, I, I, I you know, I was capable of breaking through and everything. But I think the big win for me is to show, you know, the whole world that, yes, you can do good stuff and you don't have to be part of whatever uh can you know 
hurt you or hurt your community, hurt your people, whatever. So I, I, I'm, I'm glad that I get to do what I wanted and to be in this uh, great film with such a great uh, uh, cast and just play, you know, a good guy. Why would I have yeah. to play the bad guy? <laughs> or like get killed in the film or, yeah. you know, um, I'm just blessed to, you know, finally be alive and I tell you, <laughs> in the film yeah. and get to, you know, do a really good, cool movie. And I get to be the good guy that brings down the bad guys. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> finally, we get like yeah. some, Egypt, you know, Egyptian actor slash Middle Eastern. He's playing the yeah. good guy. What, like what, what's happening in the world? Yeah. You know? yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> right? Listen. Listen, I, I got a lot of respect for you, man. A man, a man of his pride and a man of his morals and and and, and the self respect, like by all means. And, and and you're absolutely right. You know, when you when you talk about your your character, um, you know, and I I want to kind of tap into your mind a little bit with, with it. Um, you know, as you said, yes, you didn't play the stereotypical terrorist, bad guy, the one who dies, the one who has that big scene coming out of the bank and get shot, like so many typical things that it could have been done and it wasn't. Instead, you were tail you were a suit tailor. Every every suit, I was like, man, look, listen, um, whoever the stylist was for this film definitely got you right. Like, I don't know if you was in their in their pocket, like, hey, I need to be GQ because like you were set aside from the entire cast. Like, you you was looking sharp the entire movie. But um, uh, with Detective Reynolds, which you said he eventually Thanks, takes down the bad guy. I just kind of want to know because he seemed to be suspicious the entire film um could you kind of talk about the different triggers or the different part of parts of the plot um that ultimately led him to make the decisive decision he made at the end i mean let's be honest now you you did take a bullet and you could have been in distress but instead yeah. you still realized there was still a major job at hand and you and you kind of like tick back to everything that you was building up at that point because i don't know if i got shot i've been like this but yeah. you definitely <laughs> fulfilled the job so could you could you talk a little bit and and, and even and even and even as a producer or somebody you know in terms of filmmaking could you kind of give us a full world scope of detective Reynolds and how he got to that point well, um, thanks for your question. So I, I honestly, one of the, the, the major things that I loved the character was it was unpredictable. So kind of just like when you're watching the film, it kind of like you don't know really what's happening, like suspicious. Is he like what, what what's happening? Is he like a good guy? Is he like that? Like what's happening? There's corruption in, 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 the, in this uh, police department. What's happening there? So that I, 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 I honestly, uh, as an audience, uh, I love these kind of movies and storyline yeah. that you cannot know what's going to happen, what's coming. Right. And I like that in, in Reynolds, the fact that, you know, nobody ever believed on what, like his gut feeling, like he, he's been telling them a lot about what's happening. He, uh, he thinks there's something's off. Uh, even he talked with, you know, my master scenes with Bruce Willis about, you know, there's something's off. Why are you, why are you scared every time I mention this guy or this guy, you know what I mean? Like, and why every time I have somebody under my custody, um, it just either disappeared or get killed. There's something's off, and nobody of his uh, uh, higher sort of like authority or his bosses ever listened to him. He tried so much. Yeah. The good thing is he didn't give up. He kept doing what he's doing, and he kept going after his gut feeling and what what he really believes in. And that's a really important message that you're saying. No matter if you go, you know, uh, totally. I mean, in terms of like totally opposite direction than anybody else. And you're taking huge risk and everything, but at the end of the day, you're making a point that if you believe in something, pursue it and go for it. And that's exactly what happened, you know. Um, you know, twist after next, you know, he mm -hmm. kind of like uh, made his point, and he kind of convinced others that let's confront him. And this is how you get the big scene. Like, you know, I don't like this. You know, like there's something's off. And why you're here? Why are you doing this, man? Like, um, and uh, the fact that at the end. Uh, I'm I'm the one who bring down you know the, the the big dog you know like the 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 head of like the the whole the orchestrated the whole thing. I think that's that's pretty cool and it, it's a straight up message, man. Like yeah, you're you know you, you you're saying that you know keep following you know what what you you believe in. So I think Reynolds' character was really well written, and uh, thanks for also for 
for sure for the director was Miller. He, he did an amazing job, man. Yeah. Um, I remember when we were like talking about the character, uh, filling me in, brainstorm and stuff. And he's he's that kind of uh, great director that he he wants to share ideas and listen to to his actors and and you know this is the way you, you get a, like a really good sort of uh, uh, end result at the end. So I think that's my my perspective uh, in terms of Reynolds' character and his interaction with everybody in there. He doesn't fear nothing if it's even his yeah. boss, you know. So he got like internal struggle in the police department and external with the with the other guys. So I think that's a good sort of message in the film. Interesting enough, that message sounds, I don't know, very similar to your own personal life, besides yeah. the police part. But like, yeah, it's the part yeah. of being determined to to do what you feel is right, despite what everything else around you says. And yeah, good message. I'm sure that was probably a good part of the reason why you're like, oh, I'm definitely playing this role. <laughs> like, 100%, yeah, 100% <laughs> it matches and sort of like, you know, pretty close to my real life, as you said. It's um, yeah. And honestly, I wish like we have like a better sort of like, environment man to to because going through here in hollywood you see a lot of really huge great talents man out there huge talent and they're not just getting the chance to prove themselves and a lot of people cut out of work because listen it took me over what over more than 12 years 12 years or maybe 15 years yeah trying to break through how many people can be able to wait that long you know it's not an easy thing yeah. you know you, you see all our friends you know they're 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 serving here they're working here they're doing valet here they're they're doing you know working in this restaurant it could go one two three four years but at the end you know they feel like this is not working then they have to shift career and it's yeah. so sad that we, we're losing a lot of really great talents um that's why it's you just have to be patient and i think the main one of the, the main things that really sort of like helped me out to be able to to do that and wait that long is um being a doctor mm. so i think my medical school and being a doctor actual medical doctor sort of really helped me out to just be more focused and yeah. more sort of like you know don't don't you know wait you have to be patient yeah yeah so i mean most people i mean for myself you know when i was younger and i was wanted to be in movies uh which i kind of gave that dream up it wasn't really a, a real dream i wanted to pursue but i mean i think as kids we all had the idea of wanting to be a action star yet alone you knock out two action films and then you're with some of the top action stars of all time uh, so do you ever get a moment, and, and, and this is a two-part question here, but I mean, number one, being in a film with Frank and Bruce, I mean, I couldn't even be near that set. I would just pass out out of Starstruck right there, like just that alone. And Leon Robinson, I mean, I've been a fan for a while, and he oh, he just destroyed his role in this. Uh, but with such a great mixing pool of talent, experience, tenure, and all that other stuff, uh, one, what, what, what sort of different things were you able to pick up, pick? off of them and two <laughs> we all know that like there had to have been some funny moments that didn't make it to the film obviously but like was there any moments that you shared during the filming with them that you're just really going to take with you listen i i think i i i i finished this film and right after i knew right away that i had a really good sort of like uh great friends i made uh great friendship uh, out of this film um vernon davis uh, leon yeah, vernon. Um, <laughs> from this area yeah yeah kevin Dillon, uh frank grillo they're all great dudes man like i you know that i think we, we we had an amazing time together and you literally like you you were shooting in mississippi uh so you spend a lot of time together right like so you get to you know go lunch you know do uh dinners whatever and weekends so you get to know more each other like the real you right and that's that kind of like really showed everyone the real uh, uh, self and, and sort of like I had an amazing uh, time and experience with those guys. And I think uh, I look forward working together again. Um, honestly, they're, 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 you know, they, they have great career. They had uh, uh, an amazing films before. Uh, the fact that you're 
um, uh, in that, and, and, and you know, you're doing such a great uh, film with with a great cast. I think it's a, a very uh, great privilege for me, and um, I just um, had a really good time. And yes, there were a lot of <laughs> funny moments over there, you know, in, in Jackson, Mississippi. Like, especially on the weekends, we we're trying to do like, what the hell are we gonna be doing? Like, we have to figure it out. <laughs> what are we doing in the weekend here, guys? And honestly, the, the most thing I loved over there was the food. Mm. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, you know, I gained some weight over there, but they, they have amazing <laughs> food, let me tell you. But we were yeah. like, sort of like adventurers, like, let's let's go to this club or whatever let's go to this place and we have to like to drive like an hour away to go to this place and like and just me and you know like vernon or like kevin Dillon or like showing up over there what's happening and people like you know was, there were a lot of funny stuff over there um even though with like all the intense sort of moments like in, in the middle of like shooting and you know all these cars explosion you know uh, and like blowing up cars and all that you still have your moments there like you know you're so tired they're tired in the middle and you're like <laughs> waiting for the scene and we're like looking at each other like everybody's like wearing their costume whatever and i i'm like they're like all all of them like wearing like they're like you know like they're black whatever like the the the, their outfit they were they, they were wearing i'm like the only like with the suit walking yeah. around giving them like hard time <laughs> what are you guys wearing <laughs> like dude it's not your time man. Like, oh, like, <laughs> no, it was funny man like we, yeah. we, we, had, we had a lot of great time we had a lot of great time and like i remember one time we were like on you know on set like me and kevin and leon sitting you know chatting and all that in, in, in one of the, 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 you know, one of those buildings, they give us like a huge room and the sitting. And all of a sudden that guy walked in and was like, hey, what's up? We were looking at him and was like, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? And <laughs> he was like a, a, a wide dude, really nice guy. And he was like, listen, I want to invite you to uh, my penthouse. I'm like, uh, all right, so what do you have with your penthouse? I was like, oh, we're, you know, we can, you know, hang out, have parties, whatever. And then Leon just asked like, um, when you say penthouse, he's like, I don't know, he's like, maybe try to be nice and try to show up at the same time, like, come to my penthouse, <laughs> right? Like, and then it was like, why don't you guys, and then Leon was like, I'm wondering, like, how much would you pay, like, how much you pay for this? Like, oh, it's a rent. So, okay, cool. So how much you pay? He's like, I have, like, the full floor penthouse, and it's, like, $1,500. I'm like, get the hell out of here, man. <laughs> like, dude. <laughs> Come on, a penthouse fifty nine out of view, dude. Like, can you imagine? Like, and here we're like getting ripped off here in LA. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I I can honestly say there's no chance I go to Jackson, Mississippi for anything. <laughs> Not on my things to do list. <laughs> but I gotta give you know I gotta give credit for the the, the people of Mississippi, dude. They yeah. were so warm, welcoming. They were so good and so cool. They Southern were so House happy Battalion. that we're shitting the film over there, actually. Cheering us up, you know, every time we, we walked by and they were all supportive, helping That's us out that. really big time. Not mentioned, of course, like the tax incentives there. Like they were really, really, uh, really nice people over there. I, I had, I honestly had a lot of amazing time with, with them over there shooting the film. That's what's up. That's what's up. I yeah. swear, man, I don't know who, who put out more films in the pandemic between Frank and Bruce. Like, those talk about no sleep. <laughs> Every week they got a new film coming out. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I just, yeah. I just could imagine just being on set with it. But overall, I think like this is a fantastic mixing bowl of talent and experience. And, and, and it, it came together really well. And I, um, I'm one looking forward to, um, uh, the director's name is just slipped out of my head, but I'm looking forward to more of his projects. Um, and then, I, as I said in the beginning, I'm looking to see what you're going to do next, especially with this other one. But I do see by by the internet because it was on the internet. It's it's it, that means it's true. You have three upcoming projects, um, and yeah. on, and and and, and the, the coming through the pipeline. So, um, of the three, can you? Uh, so the one I'm guessing we're talking about here is Haunted. So now uh, we're focusing right now on the uh, the the, uh, the thriller the uh, the horror film that I told you about that's going to be shot here and and in Egypt the okay. adventure sort of horror it's untitled until now it's with Dark Castle and, okay untitled uh, got you yeah and then uh, there actually there are other projects that are not listed in IMDb or they haven't really 
uh, uh, talked about it, but um, I can tell and you that's this. never wrong. But here we go with the scoop here. <laughs> yeah. So I think there might be uh, a really cool project that's going to be shot in uh, in Colombia. Colombia. Yeah. All right. All right. I feel like uh, I feel like at this point now you're out here trying to make sure that you're getting good set locations for your films. Colombia, and then going back home to Egypt, and then obviously L.A. So here you go. Yeah. Yeah, the big yeah, ones. <laughs> yeah, but I'm really excited for the you know, for the new future, man. I, you know, I think that the, the the years of hustle and the years of really hard work, and I think it's it, it's it's getting very really tough right now. So I really hope for, you know for everybody to to you know to get their uh, their projects done and uh, yeah. anybody struggling, whether they're actors, whatever you know, out yeah. there, it was really tough the past few years. So I I really wish for everybody to get what they want and what they wish for. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, listen, we're going to keep this one short because you obviously got more stuff coming. And that means we're going to have to leave a seat open for you to come back to talk about, especially in terms of horror. I need I need some of that in my life, man. <laughs> Already by the little uh, tagline that we got, it looks like that's going to be pretty interesting. But also, like I said, I have a lot of respect for you. Um, and when you take that plus your passion and you diving into the genre that I like, definitely feel like some magic going to be cooked up and a lot of a lot more success so you know i, I will be for sure keeping eyes on the rest of your career Thank uh, you, man. appreciate it so appreciate muhammad it. Be before we roll out any other things you want to uh promote talk about or uh or, or or make sure that our audience is aware of i think uh, uh you, you covered everything i just uh, really hope for people will love the film and watch it uh, whether it's in cinemas or streaming uh, it's 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 not a one of those uh, regular sort of like action movie. You know, there's a really uh, uh, messages in them there and yeah. true story in there. So I think they're gonna love it, and hopefully, people will love my work uh, for the my upcoming projects. And uh, um, you know, I wish they uh, they like my work. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, and I just to add my ten cents. Yeah, you're right. There is a deep level of psychology within this film that you usually don't get in action films. You yeah. know, it's kind of brainless shooting, but like, yeah, there is a absolute good message in it. And hopefully you all are able to uh, take some of that and apply to your own life. And what do you know? Humanity just takes one step forward. <laughs> and then we exactly. can both use that. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> well, folks, totally keep an eye out uh, for Muhammad and his upcoming project. And as I said, you can check out A Day to Die today it is available on all digital and streaming uh all digital and streaming uh platform services that you can buy films from uh don't look I, i'm not sure if it's on netflix here but it, nonetheless it's available on demand and digital um and in some select theaters so you have a couple of different options and i highly suggest that if you get a chance you're feeling comfortable you're feeling like you need to get back in the theaters this is definitely a good popcorn flick a bunch of action um, um a fantastic cast and like you said even with all the bullets flying there's a good message within it so do okay. that come back in the comments let us know your thoughts about it when you do and as always stay tuned folks for more reviews interviews and content very soon